We are talking five players. Count them. One, two, three. Disregard that Band-Aid. Absolutely sliced the finger almost completely off the socket today when I was washing a knife, but that's neither here nor here. Five players are going to win your fantasy football league in 2023. I feel extremely strongly about these guys. I am falling deeper and deeper in love. It's a true modern romance story, and I want to bestow that knowledge upon y'all. I'm ready to rip. I just got back from Florida. I just got back from Denver. I'm double chocolate bronzed up right now. Fuck you guys. I'm a pale person. All right. Let it slide. Let me let me feel good about myself for a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to help you feel good about yourselves because these guys are going to win you your fantasy leagues in 2023. First thing you got to do is tuck your shirt. Now, the first guy up on this list has the highest ADP on the list. It is Mr. Jalen Waddle, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Currently going off the board as a wide receiver, 11, 16th overall in underdog fantasy. I think in a lot of home leagues, you'll be able to get him later than that. Late second, early third round for the most part, because most people are like, oh, Tyreek Hill is a wide receiver one there. I've got news for you. Jalen Waddle is a wide receiver one without a doubt of hesitation there on 99% of other teams. And the most important part is when Tua is on the field, Jalen Waddle is an elite fantasy option not a good not a great but an elite fantasy option okay and you might be saying to yourself uh two is one hit away from this and that and yes sure i get it that is correct i don't play fantasy this way i don't try to predict whether or not a guy's going to get another concussion i just look at the long history of how many guys come into the league and get this like injury prone label early on Stafford or Keenan Allen or all these guys get injured early on and then we can't trust them and then they have six straight years playing every single game I am not going to fade Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle or Tua or any of these guys on Miami because of the fact that I'm scared that Tua might have a concussion when you look at what Jalen Waddle did with Tua he had 11 games in which he averaged over 18 PPR points nearly 88 yards 0.73 but he had an incredible year last year. Incredible year. Six games without Tua, he averaged zero touchdowns. In the games with Tua, he averaged .73 touchdowns. I was never more confident than having Jalen Waddell in my lineup and knowing that I was getting five for 75 and a touchdown out of him every single time. And he's obviously extremely explosive, really fast down the field. And the biggest part is, like, they didn't add a single fucking thing. They didn't add a single player of consequence in this pass-catching group. Like, you can talk yourself into random dudes on the roster as a wide receiver three or a tight end of consequence. Mike Kosicki's not even there anymore. Not that I would ever have considered him really that, but he was racking up some, like, six, seven, eight hundred yard seasons. Their running back group is, like, cool, but no one's an elite pass catcher by any means. So, again, it's going to be another level of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, but even more involved in this offense. And when you look at Waddell versus, like, Tyreek Hill last year, volume-wise, Hill was the one there. And I'm still obviously drafting Tyreek Hill above Jalen Waddell, and I would love Tyreek Hill as my wide receiver one. But Jalen Waddell, from a volume standpoint, had like 50 fewer targets than Hill. From an efficiency standpoint, he was number one in the NFL in yards per target, number one in the NFL in yards per reception, 18.1, number four in yards per route run. He was as efficient, if not more efficient than Hill in most statistical categories. And he only saw a 21.6% target share last year. Hill was a full 10% higher at 31.6% of that target share last year they were the wide receiver three and the wide receiver seven now imagine those targets converge converge convulse can fucking it doesn't matter imagine they come closer to each other right and tyree kill drops from 31.6 down to like 28 and a half three percent and that three percent goes up to waddle and he's now near 25 percent as the most efficient wide receiver in the nfl or one of them which i expect him to be again because this offense is now another year deep they were, again, the wide receiver three and seven last year in fantasy. They can both be top five wide receivers. I genuinely, based on the fact that they were awesome last year, they were already incredible last year, and they didn't add anyone specific to the offense that's going to really take away targets from them, would not be surprised if these two together challenged as the single highest combined target rate percentage season of two pass catchers in NFL history. I don't know off the top of my head what the actual number for that is, but I imagine it's somewhere between 55 and 58%. We've had a lot of like two wide receivers that take 51, 52, 53, even like 54% 
of the targets in a given offense, like Tari Kill and Travis Kelsey were really far up there. Even Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown took a ton of targets in a low volume offense, like one led by Lamar Jackson. But I wouldn't be surprised if these guys got in like the 56, 57, 58% range of the targets in this offense. And Tua last year, look at these ranks among quarterbacks from last year. First in yards per attempt, first in adjusted yards per attempt, first in deep ball completion rate, first in accuracy rating versus man coverage, first in passer rating versus man coverage, second in red zone completion rate, second in red zone accuracy, second in accuracy rating versus zone coverage, right? He was first versus man, second versus zone, third in overall QBR, third in air yards per attempt, third in passer rating versus zone, fourth in deep ball accuracy, seventh in overall accuracy, seventh in pressured completion rate, seventh in clean pocket accuracy, ninth in under pressure accuracy, led the league in both 40 and 50 plus yard touchdowns. Like what the fuck? What the fuck? I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. This is all per player profiler as well. And this might as well have just turned into a Tua video because I wanted to actually put two on this list. I didn't. He will be one of my favorite quarterbacks going in the middle rounds that I think will end up being like a top five QB in this year. But yeah, absolutely all in on Waddle. All in on this very condensed, high efficient offense of Tua, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. Get as many pieces as you can. Waddle just happens to be the cheapest of the two pass catchers, and I'll take that all day. All right, next up on this list, running back out of Baltimore. J.K. Dobbins, currently going 57th overall as the running back 18. We don't know what's going on with him. Is it the contract? Is it an injury? Whatever. I, I'm not too worried about the situation right now. It's only June. It's only June, so we've got time to, to figure that shit out. Drink if you've heard me say this before, okay? He's now two years removed from the ACL. Now that everybody's in the hospital getting their stomach pumped, we can stop the video. J.K. Dobbins is going to be a problem for... Uh, opposing defenses and I want to jump into the numbers as to why because it feels like he got a lot of hype as a rookie and then things kind of tailed off but when we pop the trunk when we let the titties out we could see some very clear trends about who he is as a player okay in his rookie season J.K. Dobbins ranked number one in the NFL in true yards per carry number three in yards per touch which is extremely impressive given that the guys who usually rank really high up in yards per touch get that because they catch a ton of passes naturally catching passes a running back elevates that yards per touch number the guy caught 18 balls as a rookie number three in yards per touch number five in juke rate which is just elusiveness number one in breakaway run rate so just the percentage of his runs that went for 15 or 15 or more yards number one in that number seven in fantasy points per opportunity i think people just forget how exciting dobbins was as a prospect this dude was actually like a world beater at the college level and then he carried that right into his rookie season like he was his third year as a junior at ohio state 2,250 yards from scrimmage and 23 touchdowns. This dude was fucking problematic. Okay, so he had the big rookie year, obviously tore the ACL, missed the year, and then came back last year. Came back last year, the last five games of last year. Not only do I want to look at the surface level numbers, but I want to dive back into some of the efficiency numbers that we talked about with him as a rookie. Okay, last five games of last year, including the playoff game, he averaged 101 yards per game. Averaging 15 touches per game, that's not even close to unreasonable to think that that's probably where he's going to be at this year. Now, last year, in his extremely limited sample size of touches, clearly less than 100, 100%, still coming back from the ACL. He was the easiest fade of all last year. All the reports are terrible. Um, he was still injured like going to the year. That's why he missed a lot of time early on. Down the stretch, but just for the entire year, uh, efficiency numbers, ranked second overall in elusiveness among running backs in the NFL, third in breakaway run rate, fourth in true yards per carry, ninth in yards per touch. Like that, that, that is the point I'm trying to get across is like, we're forgetting just how efficient he is. And when he's going to be healthy and being the workhorse in an offense, that's going to be pretty fucking good. We should, we should be so much more excited about JK Dobbins right now. The other thing is like, yes, he doesn't get a ton of volume in the passing game, but he is a good pass catcher like he was a very good pass catcher in college he totaled 49 catches over his final two seasons with a 10.4 yards per reception mark anything above 10 I know it's a very basic and like surface level stat but if you're above 10 on the yards per reception it tells me that you're a good explosive pass catching running back you see a lot of dudes in college that get labeled as really good pass catching running backs that catch like 30 or 40 balls in their final year and we look at that number and we're like oh pretty good but they don't look at the fact that they're averaging 5.5 6.5 yards per reception and all that means is you are a dump off guy you are a guy that gets a ton of screens thrown your way it doesn't actually make you a good pass catcher it doesn't actually make you a good route runner it doesn't actually mean that you're good with the ball in your hands once you catch the ball if you're over that like 9 10 11 yards per reception mark you are typically in my mind considered a very good pass catching running back at the college level and that will typically transfer over into the nfl level now we want to talk about the offense i'm really excited for todd munkin to come into baltimore 
as it relates, not even necessarily for like Lamar Jackson or the pass catching weapons, but mostly for J.K. Dobbins. I, I went back and look at Todd Munkin's kind of like history because got a lot of hype, obviously, but he's been in a lot of different places. He was the offense coordinator at Southern Miss back in 2013, 14, 15. In 2015, Edo Smith caught 49 passes while Jalen Richard was also in that backfield and caught 30 passes. That is a wildly high number for college running backs. For one of them to be up above 30 is a really, really high uh, volume for running backs. The fact that two of them were there tells me that he knows how to use his weapons in the best way. He was the OC in Cleveland in 2019. That was the year that Nick Chubb set career highs with 49 targets and 36 catches while Kareem Hunt was there and got 45 targets and 36 catches. So Nick Chubb, career high guy under Todd Munkin as the OC in Cleveland. Obviously, Todd Munkin's been at Georgia the last few years, 2020 to 2022. We look at last year, Kenny McIntosh had 43 catches under Todd Munkin. The year before, James Cook had an 8.2% target share in 2021 while competing with McIntosh for these catches. It, I mean, it's very easy. You know, Todd Munkin was in Tampa Bay and they had a lot of production between like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, of course. I'm just overall excited for the fact that like he knows what his best weapons in his offense are and he utilizes them to that degree. Okay. So you look at Georgia, it was the running backs who caught a lot of passes. It was Brock Bowers. It was Darnell Washington. So tight ends are running backs, which I think is very similar to the Baltimore offense. Obviously they have Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman who will take targets, but overall he, he puts very good usage to the guys that are very good and what they're very good at. So I'm really excited to see what J.K. Dobbins can do under Todd Munkin, who has exploited his running backs in the passing game, and what he's going to do overall for this offense. Because you look at, if they can get back on track to like what they were a couple of years ago, in terms of just like scoring, J.K. Dobbins was a dude who ripped off touchdown after touchdown after touchdown at the end of his rookie year. If you look at the touchdown opportunities in Baltimore, we look at red zone scoring attempts per game, and then you look at Lamar Jackson, who has missed games over that time period, and you can see a pretty fucking even trend, right? 2017, he was not the quarterback. 2018, they had the ninth most red zone scoring attempts per game. He only started seven games, but over those final seven games, he went six and one, averaged 25 or more points per game. 2019, they had the single most red zone scoring attempts per game. He only missed one game. 2020, 11th most. 2021, 14th most. He missed four games. 2022, they had the eighth most. He missed five games. Obviously, that was like a shit show of a season. But if they get back on track, Lamar Jackson stays healthy. This offense should be within the top five to eight in terms of red zone scoring opportunities. And you look again back at his rookie season, he scored eight touchdowns in eight games. In those final eight games, when Lamar Jackson scored his own five rushing touchdowns, and Gus Edwards also scored three rushing touchdowns, okay? And Gus Edwards, while J.K. Dobbins is not participating at camp, Gus Edwards also is not back and participating at camp either for whatever reason. So I'm just saying Dobbins feels like the workhorse here, and this feels like it's going to be an extremely underrated offense and a situation where you want to own the fantasy running back in this offense. Love J.K. Dobbins. I also just feel like Justin Fields obviously is wildly hyped up, but he's number three on this list because he's going 49th overall in underdog drafts as the QB six, despite being the quarterback five last year in points per game. And despite his first four games in terms of fantasy points going 13.6, 8.8, 8.9, and 10.2. So we're talking about the QB five last year in fantasy points per game while his first four games, while they did not let him run, they did not let him rip. He was not Justin Fields of what we know now being those totals. Okay. He might actually be one of the five fastest players on a football field when we're talking about game speed. I mean, like my, sorry, beat that out. My brothers in Christ, he had games of 15 carries, 178 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. 13 carries for 147 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. This dude would have smashed the record if they let him rip for the entire season in terms of single season rushing yards uh, for a quarterback, all right? And we're, those numbers, 15 for 178 and a touchdown, 13 for 147 and two. We're not talking about Adrian Peterson here. We're talking about Justin Fields, who's a quarterback. From week six on, from week six on last year, he had at least 60 yards and a touchdown in six of 10 games. He had at least, this is not at least 60 yards or a touchdown. It's at least 60 yards and a touchdown in six of 10 games. And in the four games that he didn't meet those criteria, he had 88 yards, 95 yards, 11 yards. So one dud and 132 yards. The man had multiple 40 point fantasy games last year. Lamar is the only other player to have done that last year. And Tua is the only other player to even have one single 40 fantasy point game. The one where he threw six fucking touchdowns. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the weekly ceiling for Justin Fields is insane. And then the most obvious fucking point is how much better this offense is going to be. He did all of this with the shittiest personnel 
in the NFL last year, okay? You had DJ Moore. Hopefully Chase Claypool can get his shit together. Tyler Scott, I think, is a wildly talented day three wide receiver. They add to it. They add Deonta Foreman and Roshan Johnson, you know, and obviously last day lost David Montgomery. But I think between them and Khalil Herbert, they'll have a fine backfield. Uh, Darnell Wright, number 10 overall pick. Going to shore up the offensive line. They bring in Nate Davis from the Titans. Three years, 30 million. So upgrades on the offensive line, upgrades to the weapons. I mean, how much more obvious can Fields be in fantasy drafts at pick 50? It's like we're we're getting to redo Jalen Hurts a year later. Maybe you're paying an extra like 12 to 15 picks on the price, but we're making the same mistake again. Like, come the fuck on. Justin Fields is like the most obvious draft pick in fantasy at pick 50 right now. And the more I look into the number four player on this list, Devonta Smith, the more I love him. ADP currently 21 overall, wide receiver 13. I think you'll probably be able to get him even later in like friends and family leagues. Literally the only thing people can ever say about why Devonta Smith is not like an elite wide receiver is he had like a late breakout age in college, right? Like, can we move on? All right. He's just an incredible football player. Similar to Jalen Hurts has simply just improved every year at Alabama got better. Then won the Heisman. Then came in as a rookie, had a great rookie season, then fucking blew up last year as a sophomore. Like, he just gets better with every single opportunity he has given on top of what he had before. And from the second half of the year, he had a better target share and more air yards than A.J. Brown. When you look at the second half of the year, the first nine games versus the second eight games, all right? So we split it in half. And similar to Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith averaged over 18 full PPR fantasy points per game. 9.4 9.4 targets, half a touchdown per game, over six catches per game, 89 receiving yards. And not that anyone needed to confirm this for you, but when we look at Matt Harmon's reception perception, we'll link that profile down below. 82nd percentile success rate versus man coverage, 77th percentile versus zone coverage, 87th versus press. You don't typically see a profile like that that is well-rounded, right? They're usually bad at zone or bad at man, one or the other. He does it all. He is a true number one in any other offense, similar to Jalen Waddell. This is a quote directly from Matt Harmon in his reception perception. Smith is well on his way to being one of the superstar wide receivers in the league. He is a fantastic route runner who wins at an extremely high level while playing the most difficult receiver role on the field as a vertical X. Players like this have the highest ceiling available at the position. I can't help but thinking like running through all these numbers and this data that with full health, he's going to pop this year for like 1300, 1400, 1500 yards. If he stays healthy and Jalen hurts continues to improve and they pass the ball more and more and more. And this could be just a high volume passing offense. I know that's like not what they've shown, but they let go of miles Sanders and I get, they bring in penny and swift, but are those guys going to be carrying the ball 25 to 28 times a game? Unlikely, man. Uh, Very unlikely. I think they're actually going to shift towards a more pass-heavy offense, and they should because of the personnel of A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, which you could say works as a negative, but Devontae Smith is so fucking efficient, and he's so electric, and uh, I think he's going to go crazy this year as someone that you can grab as a wide receiver, too. You could also grab this guy as a running back, too, and that's Cam Akers. I've probably bored you to fucking death at this point with Cam Akers, but he's going 77th overall as the RB23 in underdog. He is... 23 years old. At the end of last year, we saw what he was. He's athletic. He's explosive. He's got workhorse size and a workhorse skill set and has, more importantly, zero competition behind him. Sean McVay came out yesterday or the other day and said, Cam Akers will be a central figure in this team's offense. And, and, And to be completely honest with you, I could not tell you like how low the bar was set for me to become nervous about Akers going into this offseason. Just in terms of, of of competition, like they could have signed Devin Singletary or Kareem Hunt, Samaji P. Ryan, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, Deonta Foreman, like even Uncle Lenny. If they had signed anyone who's been even halfway decent at any point of their career in the NFL, it would have genuinely just spooked me off Cam Akers immediately. Instead, they don't have a running back on the roster that was drafted before round five. So you look at how... The year ended last year, all right? Player profile will wrap this up for us. The final six games of last year. I won't read them all off to you, but the finishes, top 25 was the worst finish he had. He had an RB1 overall finish. Three of the final six games, he was an RB1, top 12 fantasy running back. Three games of over 20 touches. Like, it was so legit that you were getting this guy so late in drafts right now. Now, obviously, like, reports like this where Sean McVay's coming out and saying he's a central part of the offense is going to skyrocket his ADP. But where he's going right now at 77, that's the 705. Like, even if he jumps up a full round to the 605 or a full round and a half to, like, the 510, based on his upside, I still love that draft capital. And he's a good fucking pass blocker, too. All right, so those are the five guys I absolutely love that I I genuinely think will win people fantasy leagues uh, this year. 
It's Jalen Waddle, it's J.K. Dobbins, it's Justin Fields, it's Devonta Smith, and it's Cam Akers. And I know a lot of people uh, are going to bring up, I think, DeAndre Swift, or just Eagles running backs in 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 general. Uh, and to be honest, it just feels kind of like a lazy take. Like, I love DeAndre Swift as a prospect, but if you actually genuinely believe him to be a league winner, I feel like you're not actually basing that off anything realistic. Like, they have other guys that they like. Obviously, Rashad Penny, they've kept Boston Scott on the roster. They've kept Kenny, Kenny Gainwell on the roster. They have a mobile quarterback who scores way too many fucking touchdowns on the goal line. And he does not throw the ball to running backs in an offense that already has three really, really, like, upper echelon pass-catching options. Like, I get it. Swift is cool. And I'm not necessarily baiting him. But I don't think you really have an argument for Swift to be, like, a, a league-winning running back outside of like eight things breaking right for him. I don't even know why I'm going on a DeAndre Swift tangent by himself. I just feel like I'm going to get a lot of comments about DeAndre Swift being a league winner, but they're, I just feel like they're fucking lazy, right? We're not doing lazy shit here. We ain't doing lazy shit. If I wanted to take a nap, I go over to the couch and put the fucking videos over there. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. All right. Um, that was all I got for today. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and go check out some of the other content that we've been putting out for fantasy football on the channel before you leave. All right, I love you.